Welcome everyone to the session uh, now. We're really pleased to have uh, the modern Jaitandra with us. He's going to be speaking to us on TypeScript's type system from solving puzzles to proving facts of program. So we'll be interested to see what you've got to share with us there. Um, we're really th thrilled that you could join us today and, um, and share your, your knowledge and experience with us. Yeah, hello everyone. So this is Damodaran. You can call me Damo. So I'm from uh, India and I've been working in Zoho for the past eight years. And so today I'll be talking on TypeScript's type system. So let's get into the presentation. So uh, the things that we'll be dealing with this, uh, we'll be using TypeScript's type system to solve puzzles. And uh, this is for the fun part and for the Part of the profit, we'll be looking at how to prove pro uh, properties of programs, like what all the facts of programs that can be proved using TypeScript's type system. And uh, before getting into the actual presentation, like this presentation is live, uh, and you can uh, you can also follow through me, and the link is uh, given below this one. It's damo.js.org slash fnconf2022. So you can go to this slide and you can uh, view the slide. So uh, without much further ado, let's just uh, dive in. So JavaScript is this omnipresent language that is being used by almost uh, almost like every place, every device just runs JavaScript, right? So uh, the problem with JavaScript is that it doesn't have strong types. So uh, in order to solve this program, uh, TypeScript came along and it just gives us types. But uh, the thing about TypeScript is that the types are present only, at, only in the compile time and they are not present in the runtime. And uh, what happens is uh, once we compile it down to JavaScript, the types gets, gets erased completely. So uh, let's just look at a small demo. So what I have over here is the TypeScript playground and I have two types over here. Yeah, the first type is the person and second type is, uh, I'm calling it as alien and both have names. So if I just want to create a instance for this, what I'll have to do is I'll just have to create the object alone. Let's say I gave name. And I just type a generic name, and this this is get this gets accepted. But uh, let me change this to alien again, and this also gets gets accepted. So the thing uh, thing about TypeScript's type is that these are actually uh, it follows actually structural subtyping. So uh, once uh, it satisfies the condition that it has a name, it has a key name, and the value is going to be just string. TypeScript just finds it totally cool, and it just uh, moves on. So Moving on top of that, uh, what 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 others we have is we have like uh, higher order types like array, promise, and these guys are actually generics. So let me just uh, show uh, uh, one more demo on, on this. If you look at this, uh, I have four types over here. And uh, the first thing is going to be an array of string, and this is going to be a promise of uh, string. And uh, since array can have, array itself is a containment, you just say like uh, string alone. If you look at this thing, uh, this is where I write my TypeScript code, where this is where is the compile JS. And so none of the types get uh, carried along and uh, there is no uh, JavaScript being generated at all. And the moment I add a declare before some cons, I don't even have to initialize because these are also uh, just considered like they are present and you don't have to do anything else. So I can still move on. If you look at this, I type x dot, I get all the functions that are present within the uh, array of uh, JavaScript. So uh, it just considers like uh, this X is a array of string. And then uh, similarly, if I if I give Y, you have the dot then method within the promise. And if I get it as the, the value, if I go and check the val uh, type of this value, I, it says string because the type automatically gets in uh, inference and everything, uh, all the inference and stuff happens within the browser because this particular editor, uh, Monaco editor uh, has this TypeScript's uh, compiler running within itself. And uh, this, uh, this gives us this very good intelligence. Let me just show this because since this value is going to be string, if I give a dot again, I just uh, get all the assistance for uh, string types, which is like nearly, nearly, uh, it is nearly impossible to do it in plain, Java, plain JavaScript at all. So moving on, let's look at uh, one more uh, tool that is being given by TypeScript and uh, these are called as assertions. So uh, uh, the, the type gets erased from the type system once it is compiled to JavaScript, but the problem is that there are certain times where you need to have those conditions to be validated at the runtime. So with the base rule set, assertions can take care of uh, runtime validations too. 
So let's now look at what happens. We actually do this right often. We write like some uh, we write code like document dot get element by ID given by a ID string. So if we go and inspect the type of this particular variable within the editor, it says HTML element or null because this ID may be present, may not be present. If it is present, we'll get the HTML element or not. But it's like most of the cases we'll be getting it right. So uh, what actually happens? Like let's say if it is, I, let's say let's take the condition that it is definitely present. So what you have to do is you just say like as HTML canvas element. That's it. So immediately what this now says is I'm just telling the compiler that the this is this ID is definitely present and it is going to remove the R type of null and I'm going to get it. So this is one type of assertion that you can uh, guide the compiler through without uh, making a mistake or something like that. And uh, followed by uh, this, uh, look at this. This is a very interesting example. So the method is is below four, and I haven't actually implemented the method. And the only thing that I have told is it it gets a param. I don't care about the param, but it makes an assertion that the param is going to be either one, two, three, or four, and that's it. So this is what is the function is all about. And then and I also declare another constant which is going to be a number. Now I call is below four of x one. So since this is this gets called, it immediately uh, understands that x1 is either going to be 1, 2, 3, or 4, and nothing else. Now this is where it gets even more interesting. The moment I say the const x, uh, whose type is just literal 5, the only value x can take is 5 alone and nothing else. And this one is now throwing me an error. The moment I hover on top of this, it says uh, the type of 1, 2, 3, and 4 is not assignable to 5. So uh, even though the code is actually not run, the type systems inference takes care of these kind of things because we are making sure that these assertions uh, just get uh, taken over uh, through the compiler itself. So uh, this is what uh, is the uh, some of the key features of type script that really helps in real time. So moving on. Uh, so this is what uh, happens in TypeScript because like uh, TypeScript uh, is coming from JavaScript and basically like uh, more than 90% of the code that you write is going to be just uh, pure imperative code. So uh, let's say suppose you want to go full blown uh, functional programming with TypeScript, it is still possible that too with very strong types and there is a library called as FPTS and then there is a very small uh, example program within itself, I'll just show it to you. So uh, these, uh, so what actually happens is the higher order types are uh, being uh, implemented on type on top of this uh, TypeScript type system, and you get all the good flavors of Haskell like EQ, ORD, semigroup, monad, monoid category, and etc. So like functor, applicative, monad, and these guys are uh, like implemented on top of this FPTS library, and that is uh, one example uh, that we can go through. So what actually happens is. Like uh, since we don't have uh, imperative code, since we don't have like statements of sorts, uh, let's look at the small code over here. He, he just writes pipe and then uh, he just does this, what is the secret and what is the guess? And in this guess, it just asks for a particular name. It just pops up an alert or something. And then once these values are uh, injected, uh, you can write functional code because right now this uh, these two values get injected in this uh, arguments. So uh, say suppose you want to go full blown uh, pure functional programming using TypeScript along with the goodness of uh, uh, create abstractions like monad, monoid, functor, and applicative, which is still possible on top of TypeScript's type system, thanks to this great uh, FPTS library. And if you can look at it, it's just going to be like, it's sort of a lispy code on top of uh, this uh, very good abstraction also. So moving on, uh, like uh, this is where the fun part actually comes in. So like uh, you can now see how rich the type, uh, type scripts type system is. And right now, uh, when it comes to this uh, type system, uh, we are actually going to use it to solve some small puzzles of sorts. So whenever it comes to solving puzzles, uh, like we just give uh, partial clues right we keep giving uh, partial clues and uh, sometimes uh, when the clue list is com complete we immediately get the answer out of the clues that are given so in order to model this uh, the not model this we also have like logical programs like prolog and uh, there is a very small interpreter that is being written on this uh, blog post and you can look at the uh, sample code in uh, uh, prolog so it says 
father child masimo and red so it says the father is masimo and the child is going to be red and then followed by uh, eric and thorn and then thorn and alexandria and this is just kind of a family's complete hierarchy so given this much of data and if i just ask for uh, father child of uh, thorn uh, prologue says yes the eric eric is the father and thorn is the child so let's say uh, you ask something like this i know the mother but i don't know the child i don't know who x is so uh, the moment i click it says there are actually not one but three children for stephanie so this is what happens in prologue actually so you just give uh, give prologue the facts and after that you just ask for some uh, generic question and it it will be able to answer and also you can actually write uh, rules like this it says uh a parent of uh, uh x is the parent of y only if uh, x is the father of y and x is also the mother of y only if these two conditions get satisfied you can say that x is the parent of y now look at this particular query it says parent a who is the parent of thorn and if you click on ask it says eric and stephanie it just gives you both the father as well as the mother so uh this is the structure of prologue and uh, the person who wrote this blog post has implemented this prologue on top of uh, javascript and it runs using javascript it just takes the string parses and so on the usual compiler's life cycle goes on but uh, we are going to do something uh, different so what we are trying to do is we are going to encode those facts using structural types in typescript followed by we are going to populate the base data and let's uh, look at what the type system can do for us so let's look at this puzzle solver as you can see uh, the same three rules i have just modeled them using uh, using plain uh, type using typescript ridge is uh, actually it goes in the opposite direction because the direction i have taken is child to father this is actually child to father and uh, it goes in the opposite direction and whatever is not present we'll have to mark them as unknown felicia and kristen and followed by these three 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 rules of uh, these three rules that were written in prolog are also mapped onto types this type script type and then everything else this is kind of a boilerplate that i need to map these uh, the things within the type level and then followed by i just have some utilities and stuff and just and then now let's look at the actual uh, progress i just ask for who are the parents of thorn and i don't have to run any code or anything all i have to do is just hover on top of it i'll be able to see the parents it's going to be eric and stephanie followed by if i ask for siblings of felicia uh, all i have to do is just hover on top of this and i'll get all the siblings and then for the grandfather it's going to be this one so all i have, uh, so all we have to do is just map through this particular uh, series of keys and we should be able to do uh, we should be able to solve small versions like this but the even more interesting fact is we still haven't written a single line of code because these are all living on top of the type level and there is no javascript that is being still generated at all and uh, we we'll, uh, we are still able to run some kind of logic on top of the type level so moving on top of this uh i wrote an article on this uh, uh speaking about how you can do these kind of small stuff and why it actually happens in this article where you can go and uh, have a look so uh so what happens actually is uh we can write even more interesting stuff on top uh, on uh, using this typescript type system and one of them is you can model numerals on top of this types and you can also do some very basic math on top of this and one of them is what i'm going to show you next so before getting into how i have implemented this i'll just show you a demo on top of this uh i've just uh, said uh, this is going to be one this is going to be two and three and four and so on so why should i even call this as one let me just hover on top of this it just says len once and if i hover on top of two it says len two times and so on if i look at the six it says len six len uh, six times within this depth and uh, if you look at this function say, uh, look at this type it says m uh, mul of 3 uh, and 4 so so it is just multiplying 3 and 4 so if i hover on this i should be getting uh, len up to 12 times so it get, it comes 12 times actually if you count it it will come 12 times so how did i implement uh, these functions at the type level like it, this feels like we are teaching the compiler about what numbers are on top of types at type level so 
we have this inductive definition on numbers where we call this zero as just zero. This is the usual uh, literal type. And uh, we have a function called a successor where it takes in the, it is a generic type where it takes in the T and just uh, encapsulates with len and that's it. So this is all we do. So one is going to be len of once and then two is going to be len two times and three is going to be and three times and so on. This is all we need for this successor function. So continuing on top of this, we can even write an addition function. Like uh, if you give two numbers on type level, it should be able to add them and give you a result. So how, how does this actually happen is TypeScript actually allows you to write recursive types on top of them, like type of add x comma y, you can add, uh, add on top of this and uh, it just goes on. So now uh, let's try out some uh, cool functions on top of this. Let's say we we don't have seven, right? So let, let's just uh, define one underscore three and underscore four. And if you just hover, you'll get this uh, length defined seven times. So it will get uh, up to, you'll get it up to seven times in this length. And uh, using this model, I've just uh, defined like addition, multiplication, and then uh, subtraction. Maybe like even division is possible, but I just, uh, we can just have it as an exercise or so, so that uh, we can uh, develop on top of this. So moving forth, uh, like uh, this is like totally, it seems like fun part or uh, people sometimes call this as over engineering. So why do you even want to do this? Why do you even want to model numbers on top of types? But uh, it actually seems like these are like very important, uh, they are very important in the forthcoming uh, slide. So if you look at this, uh, there is something called as, called as this in the indexed list. So what this indexed list is that we have a value, we have the usual list, but this list on the type level carries the length also. So wh what if it carries the length? So what actually happens is if you look at this append function carefully, it takes an element of type X and a list of type X followed by length N. Let's say this is a list of number. So if I say list of number and underscore three, and it, uh, so this X2 at compile time, we know its length is going to be definitely three. So if I call this append and I get this X1 and compiler now knows like this, I've called the append function with a list of length three and X1 is definitely going to be of length uh, four because I've appended this one. So what, what is the implication on top of this? So I type x1 dot, it immediately gives me next. And then I call for the next value. This is the second one and followed by the third one, fourth one. And when I, after the fourth, it doesn't give me the next value because the list is now complete. The type system now knows that this list is just of length four and that's it. You don't, it doesn't have, so yeah, you, you don't have, you, you will never go wrong with this when you have something like that. So uh, right now, uh, this list is very similar to the cons list that we define in functional languages, where it carries a value and followed by the next one, very similar to an usual linked list. So uh, also we have this another function that is being uh, uh, declared over here. It's called, it's the concat function where it takes two lists of length m and length n. And since we have this add over here, uh, we can say the return type of this list is going to be of length m plus n since we have this add function. So uh, when I uh, look at this, we have the first list where the length is going to be two and the second list where the length is three. And this one is going to be of length five because we have concatenated the two list. And uh, following the same uh, exercise, we are still going to get this next uh, five times and uh, it stops over there. So these are like extremely, extremely strong type lists where you uh, where you can also do this type level gymnastics and you can never go wrong at all. So uh, if you look at the bottom, whatever black box we had set for the previous time, it just gets carried over and then uh, you will still be able to uh, move on top of this. So uh, let's just try moving still more further. And uh, right now we are going to look at indexed matrix. So how do we actually program matrix using this? I think it's going to be far, far simpler because since we have list, matrix is just going to be a list of list. And then the first thing is going to be the type, type of the matrix, let's say a matrix of numbers. And then the, sec the second argument is the number of rows and, and the third one is going to be number of columns. And uh, we can try something like uh, really interesting. 
Uh, let's look at this function. Let me just zoom out a bit, little bit. If you look at this function, we are just trying to multiply two matrices, M1 and then M2. And the M1 matrix is of uh, row R, R1 and C1. And uh, this one is going to be C1 and R1. And the return type of the matrix should be R1 and C1. Because when you multiply two matrices, let's say 3 cross 2 and then uh, 2 cross 3, the result is always going to be 3 cross 3. Right, so this is what is the actual matrix multiplications uh, underlying operation. So we just declare again uh, uh, a matrix of three cross two and then two cross three and then we multiply. Now, if you look at this, uh, this con this const, I ask for the value, I get the next three times, and then this is like the iterating through the row. And for the third row, I am getting the third value. By continuing this, you can just get all the nine values. You will just get just the nine values, nothing more, nothing less. And then like uh, you won't go wrong with these pointer changes and uh, uh, else forth. So uh, let's look at the opposite case now. Uh, let's say we define a matrix of uh, some other uh, row and column. Uh, let's say suppose we have like underscore four uh, or something underscore five. This, this is a four cross five matrix. And immediately this says uh, with a very cryptic error and a very it goes to a very long depth and says a very cryptic error, but the actual error is this type doesn't match at all. Because uh, I think this there's a variable, uh, something gone, going wrong over here. Yeah, now we are through. So the, the actual thing is, uh, since this is going to be uh, M1 is going to be a three cross two, definitely the, the column of this one is should uh, this one should always be uh, ending with two. It shouldn't start with four at all. So this is what is the error uh, that it's throwing. So let's move on. Uh, so uh, these are for the some of the fun part. Maybe like uh, this one uh, actually. So like uh, uh, we have the, this might be useful. This might not be like uh, sometimes be useful in the real life and people again can call this as over engineering or something. But uh, there is like uh, this particular use case where uh, it's really, really uh, useful. Uh, let me just refresh this one. People always, uh, we, we always need this particular use case of uh, some kind of an automata. Like, uh, let's look at a life cycle of a bug in a very typical software uh, development uh, project life cycle. Uh, you have the bug, it will be filed by someone and it will always be open. And immediately the next stage of the bug is going to be like, it is under fixing stage. And once it is, uh, the developer marks it as I am fixing it. And after fixing it, he is going to say that this is to be tested. And uh, this is the next step. From fixing, you go to to be tested. And from to be tested, you then go to uh, the bug is now closed. Because whoever uh, filed that bug will, will test whether the, after uh, this fix, the bug is there or not. And then it will be uh, like uh, this bug is now fixed. Uh, now we will just move on. But sometimes what happens is that if uh, that bug is going to persist again, you just go back to like this, this has to be opened and it has to go on. So this particular life cycle is yet again modeled as on top of the type, like key value pairs on type level. And uh, we again declare a function. We call it as move bug. And then we write, this is kind of a generic function. We say X extends key of bug life cycle. So uh, this we TypeScript has this particular operator called as key off, which just, which just gives you the, these keys alone, open, fixing, to be tested, and closed. Only you get these four values. So uh, the argument is going to be this X, only those four values of this particular key. And uh, this is, and the return type gets again interesting. If you look at, that, look at the return type, it says bug cycle of X. So if it is open, the return type will always be fixing and so on. Now let's look at, I say, I call it as move bug. And uh, what is the return type of Y? It says fixing. So if I call it for, again, fixing, the return type has to be to be tested. That is the next step. It says uh, to be tested and so on. Let's say I just give something else uh, like remove or something. Definitely it is going to throw error because it is not assignable to this particular type. So like uh, people are actually use this uh, kind of an automata kind of thing uh, with uh, client libraries like uh, Redux and stuff where you will have to move from one state to the another. You get the state followed by the action and then you move over to the new state. 
and for these things you can truly uh, do the strong typing on top of this uh, automata or this uh, bug uh, or this life cycle kind of things where you can uh, never go wrong at the compile time at all so I didn't want to use this word, but these are actually dependent types in disguise in TypeScript. We cannot like say uh, uh, whether we can prove uh, facts or like uh, prove, the, I mean like prove theorems on top of TypeScript, but definitely uh, these come in very handy. So why not stretch this even further? Why not go even further? Because uh, in the latest releases of TypeScript, they introduced some, uh, something called as template literals, uh, where, which we are going to look at next. Uh, so template literals are very similar to template uh, template literals present at JavaScript, but these are present in types, uh, type level actually in TypeScript. So uh, uh, let's look at uh, the demo first. I just say Zoho, it's going to be the URL of uh, this one, https colon slash slash zoho.com. And I will just say whether it is URL of Zoho and I'm just hovering on top of this. It says, yes, it's an URL. Let's say I give something else. Uh, I remove this HTTPS or colon or something. Uh, it says false, it, it is not a new URL. So this happens actually at the type level because TypeScript now has uh, the ability to define something similar like this. Uh, like you can say uh, the string has to begin with HTTPS and uh, these are like capturing parentheses of your regular expression. This is the first capture and this is the second capture. If it is of this particular pattern, you say true, otherwise it's false. And with this, you can say that this is an URL or not. And uh, you can go even further. Let's say you can define a type something or let's get domain. And uh, it can say like, uh, since it is able to get this value of you, you can just return it. Now uh, for the same value of this Zoho, if I just uh, hover over here, you get Zoho instead of true or false. So this is, these things are as powerful as regular expressions and uh, you can still, uh, uh, program using them and you, you can strong type your uh, code. So since we have now come to the lex lexing part, uh, why not do uh, try doing parses? So let's try to do uh, something uh, uh, on top of the parser level. Uh, look at this, we are just trying to do the balancing parenthesis. Uh, as, uh, since uh, balancing parenthesis involves push down automata, you definitely need a stack. You, uh, you cannot write a, a, a validation for balancing parenthesis using the regular expression because you need to keep hold of the stack and you definitely need either a stack or a variable or something uh, or, you, or the combination with the regular expression or something. So it's definitely not possible using uh, regular expressions. So we write something like this, balance. Balance and we say, uh, we write this particular rule. We ask for whether uh, it starts with the opening parenthesis and ends with the closing parenthesis this and I try to infer whatever is in the middle and whatever is in the middle still has to balance. And this is again, yet another recursive type. So with this, if we go and test for this, we are going to get, yes, this is getting balanced and let me remove only one thing and it's going to give me false. Yes, the, the parentheses are not uh, matching right now. And we can just go uh, even more uh, deep because we can just uh, define something like these are going to be my operators and you can write a balancing grammar also like complete full blown uh, uh, mathematical expression or something. I just have a small uh, uh, demo of this where you have balancing parenthesis followed by operator plus and then it says, yes, it's true again because this is still going to type check. Uh, so this is what is so cool about this. We can still go further and people have gone uh, even more further and uh, they have defined uh, things like uh, JSON parser on top of the type level. So if you look at all the demo, we don't have any meaningful code on the right side and this is just on top of the type level. And uh, this is just uh, very easily possible uh, right now because of this particular tooling. So moving on. So uh, why is this even possible? Uh, the reason for this is generics, Generic types are actually type level functions. Uh, and then functions uh, that is generics, they can compose easily because uh, since they compose easily, uh, we can say like uh, these type system of TypeScript is a very small Lambda calculus. And uh, the implication is actually very huge because TypeScript's type system is actually uh, Turing complete. Uh, since this is going to be Turing complete and this has been marked as an open issue within the uh, GitHub, but we can use it to our advantage because since something is Turing complete, the equivalent uh, in the church language is going to be like, this is actually Lambda calculus. And with Lambda calculus, we can do even more fun stuff, right? So uh, we can use it to our advantage. But uh, one of the unfortunate thing about uh, pr proving using TypeScript is, uh, 
uh, TypeScript's team calls this to be a non-goal, actually. Like uh, uh, having a sound type system or provably correct type system is not a goal of TypeScript's type system. But uh, the thing is, uh, we don't have to limit ourselves. We can just go even further and try to prove uh, uh, even more uh, crazy stuff on top of this one. Maybe like we can have a parser on top of the type level, which can do, uh, which can parse these types and uh, prove even more proper uh, facts of the program or something similar of, of sorts. So, uh, and the next part is going to be, uh, since uh, we, we already have the, these kind of things, right? So we saw a, pro a program, something like get uh, an append, append of a list where you get the element the list of length n and the return value is going to be n plus one. And uh, these programs, you don't have to test it at all because even before writing the code, you're writing the conditions, the preconditions, the post conditions and so on. And these things are like uh, provably correct, probably correct code and the formal verification takes care of the rest. And uh, what uh, this means is we have like a very huge open source code bases where you can actually scan for for backdoors of sorts. Let's say we have like very robust uh, software system. Like let's say there is an offline tool and it guarantees that I don't give a send a request to any any server of sorts. But uh, who actually gives you the who actually gives a certificate that this particular piece of uh, software doesn't give request at all? Of course, there are like uh, programs that can uh, browse through the source code and do. But uh, we don't have the actual proof, which can be like we can be very damn sure. But uh, with these kind of uh, provers, which is like really, really uh, possible. And uh, the second part is we do this test-driven development, like uh, test-driven development in the sense uh, we write tests first and then followed by we do the actual implementation. But uh, since we, uh, uh, but what we can actually do is by during the development, if we are sure of the types, we can just move over and then uh, uh, just uh, write the implementation alone and we can be very damn sure during the development time itself like we don't uh, uh, remove these constraints of sorts. And then uh, following this, uh, this is like very, very opinionated because like uh, types seem to be the dualness of imperativeness. Like imperativeness, I have for, for the deal of imperativeness, I mean like you say in imperative uh, language, do this in first statement and do this in the next and so on. But uh, when you look at types, what we say is just uh, give clues. This is my input and this is my input of uh, some additional clue and this is my output with additional clue, which is very similar to what we did in Prolog. We just give it facts and then we just uh, let the system decide what to uh, um, uh, do with that. And uh, if we keep giving these constraints, uh, tighter constraints and tighter constraints on top of this, at one point of time, it is just going to be a puzzle solver. Uh, the types themselves act as a puzzle solver and just uh, gives you the uh, correct uh, correct value. So uh, as you can uh, look at the first uh, beginning of the slides, you can look at the we, we, the type system did not know about numbers. We dotted numbers and then we dotted an indexed list which made use of the numbers and then we designed a matrix which made use of the list and it when we can go on, which like which just feels like teaching a toddler about a particular domain or something. So uh, you can look at the compiler as a small uh, toddler or something, and you just keep giving it, giving it, uh, giving it some small clues, and then it can, and it can figure out like uh, higher level details and so on. And so specifications can just be encoded at the type level, and like uh, provers can take in these specifications and generate and give us a program, which can, which we can be very well sure that uh, this is going to be like very secure and uh, stuff. Uh, and then moving further, uh, correctness of the software is now completely under the uh, testing team or like uh, very going through very strong reviews and so. But uh, since this is involving some human effort, uh, like most of it can be averted because uh, right now, uh, from hospitals to software that actually use uh, that are getting used to drive flights and so, they, there can never be errors at all. So uh, in places like these, where correctness is the major uh, setback, we can make use of uh, these very strong types to avoid this. And uh, moving on, uh, the next bank or the country's constitution could only be programs. Now that we have uh, uh, smart contract systems built on top of blockchain where everything is decentralized, 
the constitution itself can be written as a piece of code and uh, and someone has to come and verify whether uh, whether something is written wrong or bad using a panel or something but with some some kind of system like this approvable system like this we can just give it to the formal verification and then uh, we can be sure like uh, like very very uh, sleek errors are not uh, given up or of sorts and uh, another uh, implication is that right now we have lots of bureaucratic machines moving over like uh, someone has to come and verify something and uh, with uh, these kind of things in place where the constitution or something like that is itself uh, being uh, written as a piece of code and all it needs is like approval from someone now uh, these can be again uh, replaced by a uh, piece of code and in these kind of cases taking chances is never an option at all because we just need software that we are very sure will uh, will work and will, and would never go wrong so uh, with this i conclude my uh, session uh, and then uh, for this session i be, uh, the major inspiration was like uh, philip badler's proposition or types uh, talk and then nadia's refinement types and those two talks are like really really uh, very engaging and like really really path breaking and then of course it is dependent types where it just i was thinking like if uh, i had a system like this where i can use it in in my work and uh, in daily life uh, i'll be like uh, very helpful and then of course haskell haskell has always been my go to language for functional programming and then even though i don't use haskell in uh, day to day programming but uh, it made me a better programmer by learning uh, a lot of these stuff on top of typescript and uh, uh, the usual uh, reddit uh, haskell's reddit thread is a good place where like it accepts uh, newbies like me and they just give me uh, videos and books and so on and then i just want to introduce two books where you can get started and the first one is going to be a type of programming written by renzo and uh, this program just introduces uh, to functional programming in a very elegant manner and also to uh, theorems and proofs uh, followed by algebra driven design this is a very new book uh, that has been written and it just talks uh, about this how you write uh, code uh, how you write code which actually has uh, provable capabilities uh, followed by i just have i just want to thank my friends at zoho and then uh, thanks to functional conf team like uh, for the opportunity and uh, a very cool cover photo for the presentation because i was thinking like uh, what should i have as a first slide and like uh, functional conf just <laughs> solved that pro uh, solved that problem for me by giving a very cool photo so with this uh, i'll just uh, conclude my presentation and uh, go on for the questions uh, yeah thanks there's a few few questions there um that uh, people yeah. have rick rick's got one um, yeah, yeah. Why, why the reverse relationship? Yes, because uh, I'll just go back to the slide. He just felt he's, he's, his next comment, I think, relates to the question too. So look, look at both of them. U, C, 2, F, and then invert. Okay, yeah. I'll just go to the program. Yeah, so Yeah, okay. So uh, the thing is, uh, whatever direction I go, I need the reverse one also. So let's say uh, I'll have to define this twice. So uh, either C2F or F2C, I'll definitely be needing both because uh, we, we have siblings as well as grandparents, right? That is why I wanted uh, both. Uh, so I just defined uh, uh, C2F for me, but you can do it in the other way also, uh, very similar to the prologue way, but I just wanted this to uh, work this way, nothing else. Uh, I think it's similar in the exam. Okay. So, uh, have I answered uh, Rick's question? Rakesh has yeah. got a question as well. Yeah, I think both are same questions. Then you see to yeah, I think the second question is also same. Um, in the example, some of the strings used like HTTP is defined as the type. Uh, defined as the type. How do you make this URL type helper work? Let's say a user in, users input. Okay, fine. Yeah, let me just show here. Yeah, let's say you define a function. And it takes an uh, argument. Oh, 
okay this is just returning me the let's do for the get domain yeah this just returns me the boolean value we cannot get the thing so yeah we cannot be sure yes so you have to do something like this Yes. So I'll just give you a very small demo over here. What we have is we get the length of the string where we have a generic function and we have written uh, yes is going to be a string and we call the get domain thing. So now we know that uh, it is going to hit two types actually. The first one is going to be string and the second one is going to be Boolean. So we'll have to do an enumeration on top of this and that is why we need to uh, write an if check. If it is going to be Boolean, then it's not a domain. So we are returning a null value and else we are just now asserting that a is definitely a string because in this particular place, TypeScript is not able to make sure that uh, u is a string. And so uh, the moment we assert, we start getting the length of the string. So this is how you use this uh, uh, generic types or uh, these kind of uh, template literals in uh, on your functions. I think we're just about out of time. Um, yeah. So. Thank you, the Modern, for that uh, little demonstration of how, how this all works and what the benefits of it are.